Hey, everybody, Dave Archer here, Atlanta Falcon Radio Network and AtlantaFalcons.com. And what a cool moment. We get to catch up with the newest Atlanta Falcon, the highest ever drafted tight end in NFL history. And I think tight end is probably the wrong name for this guy. I think freak, beast, whatever you want to call him, there's not a category for him. Kyle Pitts joins us. Kyle, appreciate your time. Walk me through the feel. Walk me through the feelings, big man, when you got the call and you knew you were going to the National Football League. Uh, when I got that call, my heart dropped. You know, I've been dreaming, dreaming, dreaming for this since I was a kid, and to be able to see my phone ring and just experience the whole thing of walking across the stage and shaking the commission's hand—that's something that every kid dreams for. And for me to live it out, I was, I was really excited, and I, I don't know how my emotions—I I shed a couple tears. But, you know, it's something I've been working for, and I feel like you know all my hard work is starting to show off a little bit. Did you have an idea that the Falcons were the team? Had you talked to Atlanta prior to being selected fourth overall in the draft? Well, I did talk to a lot of the coaches, but, you know, I, I had a feeling that maybe that was going to pick a quarterback. I don't know why. But uh, because I feel like, you know, because of the great class we have at quarterback. So I thought they were going to you know, take the next quarterback. But, you know, once I got that call, I was like, okay, now, you know, they picked me, they took they, – they gave me the opportunity to, you know, be the be the number four pick. They kind of they could have maybe traded back or picked someone else, but they picked me at pick four. And and to be the highest ever tight end, that's something special and something that no one I feel like no one can take from it. And I mean, the the moment just was surreal and just to embrace it all and live it is, is something special. The Mackey Award winner for the tight end, best tight end in the country. And again, I don't think that does this guy's service. A tight end is 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 just part of the equation when you talk about Kyle Pitts. So, Kyle, how much do you know about this team? Uh, the the guys that are on this team, how much do you know about it? I, I have a pretty good gist about it, and I know what Coach Smith does. I know kind of his philosophy, and I know he's pretty tight end tight end biased. So I'm pretty excited. To, <laughs> I'm pretty excited to see how things go, and I know. He's a great coach. He's a great, you know, he's a great offensive mind. And I'm pretty, like I said, excited to see how he how he uses the team and turns it around. And, you know, I feel like, you know, makes us playoff contenders. Well, just in the last 21 games, 97 receptions, 18 touchdowns in 21 games, including 12 last year in just eight games for Kyle Pitts, the Mackey Award winner and unanimous, and unanimous All-American and the highest drafted tight end of all time. Have you any of your teammates reached out to any of your new teammates? I know you have some relationships with some guys, but tell me about the, some of the guys reaching out to you and welcome you to Atlanta. Uh, my phone has been crazy, so I'm just trying to go through my messages. But uh, I've seen uh, Matt Ryan, me and him talk. We're going to go get lunch you know, sometime later this week. Uh, me and Kyle really kind of we, – we train at the same facility, so me and him, me and him are, uh, we're pretty close. But those are the two guys that I've, you know, talked to so far. But, you know, I feel like once I look through my phone a little bit, I'll, I'll find some more people. But, you know, I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited to, you know, meet the team and, and get in the building. Now, there's always in, in this game, as you know, there's always comparisons that come down. And you're going to draw comparisons because of your superior athleticism and what you – you're just a different guy that plays this position. You're already drawing comparisons to some of the best that ever played. Calvin Johnson, one of the great wide receivers of all time. And we've got one on this team. And Calvin Ridley rising, certainly. But Julio Jones, you're drawing comparisons to those kind of guys. What's that mean to you to already haven't caught a pass in this league yet and they're only talking about you as some one of the greats of all time? I mean, it means a lot to be coming in the league and kind of having that hype behind me, hype behind me and knowing that you know, I'm ready to live up to it. I'm ready to show people that this isn't a fluke. This isn't a waste of a pick. So... I'm just excited to work and sh show people that, you know, everything that I've done at Florida, I can translate it to the next level. So it'll be, it'll be a uh, exciting journey. I feel like. I called the SEC title game in your game against Alabama and it was an unbelievable offensive show. You guys came up just a hair short, but it wasn't because of what you guys did on offense. You guys lit it up on the offensive side of the football. So you've been to Atlanta, but what do you know about the city of Atlanta, the fan base here? I know, I know it's crazy. <laughs> I know, it's, I know it's loyal, you know. So I, you know, I can't, I can't wait to get get there and you know get all settled in. You know, I know the fan base is, is like, like it's 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 a different one. I feel like you know they're they're a little more loyal than the others. So you know, I, I can't wait. To, I want to be on their good side at the end of the day. <laughs> well, I think they're excited about having you, man. I don't think there's any question about that. Based on what I've been hearing, my my Twitter account's been blowing up talking about you coming in, and there's people excited <laughs> about. It. Okay. I mentioned categories, and you're categorized as a tight end, 
And yeah. I said on our draft show, that's not what this guy is. This guy is a weapon. Tell me what you think you are and give the fan an idea what they're getting Kyle Pitts. I would just say, you know, a great word that my dad used, hybrid. Being able to move all over the field, being able to play the X, the C, the F, the, you know, just being able to be in the backfield, hipped off from the tackle. Um, being a hybrid it just makes you someone that it's, it's not, like you said, just not a specific Y. And to be able to just play everything and be versatile, that's something that, you know, I feel like I bring to the table. And, and I, I'm, me being, a, I feel like, a mismatch problem against, you know, smaller DBs, that's, that's something that, you know, I, I, I like to, I like to see, you know, what coaches put me in great position to win my matchup. Well, I know all the Georgia fans remember number 84 lining up on some of their really good corners. You got a guy that went in the first round, in the first round at Stokes. Campbell's going to come off the board at some point here in, the, in probably the next couple of picks. So you've gone up against the best that, uh, the, that the college football has to offer. How much does that get you ready? Playing in the SEC gets you ready for the NFL. I think it gets me ready a lot because SEC is the highest level of ball and, you know, the best conference. So uh, it's, it's great. It's, it's high pace, high speed, great athletes every game. It's kind of like the NFL. The, the, I feel like it's the, 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 the JV of the NFL. So, you know, it's always going to be a step up of speed and, and, men, and the, like the mental side of it. But you know, I'm pretty happy. I feel like the SEC kind of gave me a good gist of what's going to happen at the next level, but I know it's going to be ramped up a little bit more. Well, when you talk about what this offense looks like, you, you mentioned you know a little bit about this offense. You know it's a little bit tight and biased. I mentioned some of the numbers. John o. Smith in this last last two seasons caught 109 passes, 11 touchdowns, and eight touchdowns a year ago. I talked about your prowess in the red zone. You scored 12 touchdowns a year ago. Why are you such a nightmare down in the red zone? I know you got that big catch radius, but you run great routes as well. I feel like it's just my mental. Um, during the week, I like to study my opponent and know what defense they're going to play in the red zone. So I know, you know, certain moves and certain releases I have to use. So just going into it, I kind of, you know, I know a certain package will come in. I know who, who will be guarding me and I know what their weakness is. So that, like I say, it just comes from repetition during the weekend, during film study and, you know, studying, studying the defense and knowing what they're going to do so I can win my matchup. Kyle Pitts, the highest drafted tight end. And I'm, again, I think we're using that term too much. He's not a tight end. He is a weapon in the NF NFL history. You got to go all the way back to 1961. Mike Ditka selected fifth overall. Kyle Pitts goes fourth overall, highest tight end drafted in NFL history. Kyle, we can't wait to get you in a Falcon uniform. We can't Thank wait you. to get you in Mercedes-Benz Stadium and let you go completely off because I think that's what you're going to do. Yes, sir. I appreciate the opportunity.